Hi guys, how you doing? Welcome back to Sim UK. This is track day R. I tried to do a live stream on this earlier today and apparently the quality was awful. So um, I don't know why, because my end, everything is fine. Solid 60 FPS, high recording um, data value, no uh, dropped frames, nothing like that. So I thought I'd put together a little video, just like a two minute video, just to showcase uh, what's going on with the um, HS3 Pro and Tracked AR. Tracked AR is looking very promising. It's feeling very realistic. Um, the two almost work together seamlessly, but not quite. So at the moment, I'm having to use Xbox 360 CE, which is emulating uh, an Xbox 360 controller. Um, so the HS3 Pro is being converted into an Xbox 360 controller effectively. But we almost don't need to do that because if we come into the options and go to the controls, you can see that the HS3 Street Fighter Pro is there. And if I come into the buttons, um, and if you look there on the throttle, where, it's, where the red line is now, it says Xbox Controller 3. So that, despite the fact that it can see this controller, is taking the Xbox 360 controller input. Now, if I turn that off and try and use this um, as a controller, it doesn't work. So there's a, bit of, there's a bit of work to be done. You can see here I've got gear down, but if I try and gear up, it brings the rear brake on. So I've also got some conflicts and stuff. In addition to that, occasionally whilst I'm racing around, let's go back, let's go back. Occasionally whilst I'm racing around, it will just randomly swap. It will just randomly swap. So the throttle will uh, suddenly become uh, my tuck. You'll see the rider standing up and sitting down and tucking in behind the, the windshield uh, when I'm trying to accelerate. So we're almost there. We're almost running, but we're not quite. Uh, let me just get a camera on. It's a bit awkward. So here's the HS3 Pro, if you've never seen that before. Unfortunately, my camera systems aren't set up yet, so you can't see the rear brake and the gear shifter and stuff, but they do work, as you can see here, one down, five up, uh, which is nice. And if I press this button here, we can get into first person. And if I pull away like that in first gear, I'd be on my ass. so uh, good job I'm into second. So you can see, getting the bike up and straight is a little tricky and maybe that's just because I'm going so slow but it doesn't take a lot of front brake to bring the arse end up so you have to treat it with a lot of respect now I don't know this track and I don't know this game that well and I've only been playing for an hour But it's already starting to feel incredibly realistic. Oops. Into neutral. You can see there. Bit of a wheelie. Not knowing the track obviously destroys any sort of real potential I can show for the game. This is more about showing that you can get an HS3 Pro working on track they are to some degree. Um, there's a lot of things I can't do. I can't change the rear brake. Every time I put, go up a gear, the rear brake comes on. But I'm sort of living with that because obviously it only comes on for a brief second. 
and I'm not exactly trying to set any kind of realistic lap time. The only thing I'm really, really struggling with is getting the bike back up again after a corner. The corners themselves feel really nice. And the, the level of realism that the game is giving back to me is in, incredible. Let's try again. Oh, can I? Uh... There's got to be a way to force that to get back up again. I don't know how. I'm just having to do restart for now. The game itself, by the way, track day are just under 20 quid and. Um... Just under 20 quid and it's still in early access. So um, there's a lot of stuff that's maybe not of the highest polish, but um, you kind of expect that to start with. see tyre and fuel simulation is currently off. I'll be honest with you, I don't know how to turn that on. I would do if I could. But we're not really in the position where we can sort of take advantage of the realism that would bring. So there's no point right now. Invalid lap time. Don't hit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, let's see if we can follow this guy a little bit. I'm hoping this has got track IR ability turned on. Because when I go around a corner, I can't see where the apex is or where the corner ends. Uh, which obviously makes learning a track that much more difficult because <laughs> that's where I came off last time isn't it right let's try one more lap one more lap I'm just going to fire up track IR and see if it is on Because that would be nice to find that that's actually implemented. So I just chucked on my oldest head tracking device. So I've got some uh, light interference. Let me just shut the door. So yeah, I can tell already that we don't have head tracking. Whether or not it's something that's in the game that you have to turn on, I don't know. But for now, no head tracking. So let's just see if I can do one lap. Oh, bloody hell. Right. 
cramp in my <laughs> just picked up a cramp in my left leg. To make, that's my uh, gear changing leg, obviously. Being able to see my exit is definitely my problem right now. That would be, you know, oh, that would be something I could overcome if I knew the track really well, which I do not. This is is a test to see whether this controller works with this game. And I think I'm proving that that is true to a point. It's not 100% perfect, but the fact that it sees the controller at all is an improvement over any other sort of milestone game. Milestone games only see Xbox 360 controllers, it seems. This one. Is already leaps and bounds ahead of them in that regard. It's just the uh, oh, it's the rebinding of the key buttons that's not quite where it needs to be. Ah, uh, see, so I didn't crash that time. Learning the track. wide plus I haven't got my shoes on and the uh the pegs are proper motorcycle pegs so it's actually bloody hurting my feet now Using this controller definitely demands a more realistic approach from people. For example, I need to have my shoes on. I should be wearing gloves if I'm doing a long session because my hands will get all sweaty and then I won't be able to grip the throttle properly. Um, in addition to that, I need to have some water on standby. And when I'm doing a MotoGP session, after each session, I do need to get off the bike and stretch my legs and stretch my back and stuff because I am in a rider position. Ah, oh, you dick. Oh, I nearly rolled it. I'm in a rider position and, you know, I am working hard. I'm not going, I'm not using my thumb to go around corners. I am leaning into the corners. Again, too late trying to straighten out and that puts me on the wrong trajectory for the next corner now obviously that's something that you're learning time time spent on the track learning the track but um, just being able to use head tracking just accelerates the speed by which you can do that. Now I can understand why the game doesn't have it, other than, other than being an early access title. As far as they're concerned, 99.99999% of people are going to be using an Xbox 360 controller. And head tracking when you're on an Xbox 360 controller makes no sense. Well, not really anyway.
There we go. I'm off. Right, so anyway, this was just a test, just to show that the HS3 Pro and this game do work together. And as a first look at uh, Track Day R, I've got to say, I'm really impressed. Um, I don't know how I'm going to communicate with the devs over trying to get the input situation working on this. But if there's any way of doing that so that I can really get into it, I will. And if they, I mean, if they are accommodating and want to put head tracking onto the game as well, then I'll definitely hook that up, and we'll be able to see the difference between using a, con a dedicated motorbike controller like this um, in comparison to using an Xbox 360 controller like this. That in terms of immersion, um, it's I mean, it's just off the charts immersive when you can turn your head when you really feel like you're on a bike. And Track Day R is doing a fantastic job of communicating what the bike is doing back to me. Um, I, I think this game is really impressive in terms of its simulation element. Sure, the UI is not the sexiest UI I've ever seen in my life. Um, and there's maybe not that much content in comparison to some other bigger company brands. But I tell you what, there are few few motorcycle simulator games that feel as realistic as that was feeling there um maybe when you go off track i shouldn't be able to keep it that stable i don't know i've seen some people do it i mean mark marquez can do it at 170 uh, miles an hour so it is doable but uh yeah anyway right well, suppose he can't do it so much these days. He's 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 lost that knack, perhaps. Anyway, I'm getting uh, I'm getting sidetracked. Track day R, very first look, very impressed with the game. Uh, it does work with the HS3 Pro almost perfectly, almost without even needing X360 controller, which is very exciting indeed. Um, but yeah, tell me what you think. Don't don't tell me what you think about my riding. Because that's irrelevant in this video. That is not a relevant point. Crashing all the time is doesn't highlight how good the game is or how good the controller is. It just shows that it's difficult. And it is difficult. And there's a bit of tweaking and stuff that I need to do so that I can get the bike going straight when I want it to go straight. The corners feel fantastic. The corners feel amazing. I'm just struggling to get straight. And without head tracking to see where my exit point is, that's always going to cause me to turn in too early uh, sorry 